In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Louis the Ninth, King of France, Confessor, and Third Order Tertiary of St. Francis of Assisi. He lived in the 13th century, and he was only 12 years old when he ascended the throne. His mother, Blanche, acted as regent until he came of age. It is said one of the things that she impressed upon him was the deep religious sentiment, but religious life. She even said, as it is recorded, Son, I would rather see thee dead than commit a sin understanding that sin is the greatest evil in the world, and understanding that virtue is the greatest prize that we can have in this world, the greatest treasure which we can obtain. He lived a holy life, an exemplary one. He was a good and just king. What else could we really say other than those words? He was good and just. He was charitable. He dealt with his duties honorably. He did not shirk from the challenges. We know this to be true because he undertook two crusades. The second one in which he fell to fever and died. But he was the example for his kingdom. He did not put upon their shoulders anything he was not willing to do himself. He did not say, go you, practice charity, and yet have a heart cold to the world. He himself showed the charity, his love for the poor, by attending to them himself. He's sort of the oddity that we see in this world today. Oftentimes, people who have greater wealth, unfortunately, do not understand it is their duty to use that wealth to help their fellow man, to help the less fortunate. They may do something for notoriety and publicity, But is that everything? Do you need so much in this world? God has blessed you with this so you can save your soul. Even in Scripture it says it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to save his soul. If you recall, the apostles asked the question, then how could anyone be saved? Our Lord replied, "Was what is impossible to man is possible with God. And you see this in the life of St. Louis. He showed it was possible. He showed how one should live their vocation. And how to live it in a way that is pleasing to Almighty God. And his words, his counsels, were of, at such a impact that he was sought by other monarchs in Europe to help settle quarrels and dissensions. How many wars, how many battles did he prevent because he looked to teach to his brother kings something of charity. What a horrible thing. And in Catholic Europe, some, they would go to war um, with themselves. That with that first crusade that St. Louis went on, he 
was one of the forces working with the Pope, Pope Honorius, I believe, no, Pope Benedict, I believe, at the time, to get the Catholic nobles, to get the Catholic sovereigns to stop fighting amongst themselves in order to help those in the Holy Land. What a horrible example of what a Catholic is supposed to be. Now sometimes one has to go to war in order to right an injustice. St. Louis, well, went to the Crusades. But he made sure war was the last attempt. It was the, the last thing you could do. Some want to go to war right away. Not St. Louis. He preferred peace. He preferred peace in his kingdom. He preferred peace in his own halls. One of the things that he was so ab- adamant about was honoring the name of God. Honoring our speech in general. No, never was there a coarse word to come from his lips. When you would hear blasphemy, he would punish the person who blasphemed. Understanding that is a horrendous crime against Almighty God. Something, unfortunately, we in this world have taken for granted, but... We've gone the other way. The idea of using God's name irreverently doesn't affect people the same way it should. I assume it affects you when you hear the name of Jesus used irreverently, used as a sport, as a, as a game or a sport, in jest, speaking of religious and spiritual things, as a joke, this whole world doesn't care. It's like, well, what? A, what? It's open season. It's very interesting. We're so sensitive about offending other people. We don't care about God. We don't care about God. Of course, we should not look to offend others. But one truth must be spoken. When we have to stand on a principle, stand up for an ideal, the ideal which is Christ, and defending it, if someone is insulted by that, that's their problem. Maybe they should ponder on those words instead of reacting to them. Maybe they should think about Who is God and who am I? And how am I in relation to Him? If I come to understand who He is, how can I speak this way of Him? Well, then we have to be that way with all religion. What anyone believes, we have to be very sensitive about it. We have to honor them the same way. No! Exactly what it is, but I heard something this last week about two men having a debate, basically trying to come to the conclusion that Muslims and Catholics worship the same God. Forgot what I that was what I saw exactly. But oh the simple, the quick answer is no, we don't. First off, they call their God Allah. And secondly, they do not recognize the Trinity. They do not recognize Jesus Christ, the Son of God. A great prophet, they may say, but not greater than Muhammad. He's the great prophet. I guess he's their Jesus. (laughs) 
These were the men that St. Louis went to the Crusades to fight. We worship the same God. No, we do not. Even we think of other of Christian denominations, as they're called. Worship the same God? No, we do not. But I believe in Jesus Christ. No, you do not. You don't. You can't. You might think you do. You might, with sincerity, think you do. But you don't. As to truly believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to truly follow our Lord is to follow Him in everything. Everything. We do not pick and choose. This last Friday, hosting the Catholic Faith radio program for Father Joseph, who is in Europe right now at the Czech Republic, so keep him in your prayers. You know, it's always traveling across sea can be, well, it can be tricky sometimes. So please pray for him that he gets back safely. But talking about Mr. Paul Whitcomb, who was a Methodist minister, who, looking into the Scriptures, became a Catholic. He basically had to be honest with himself. He had to look at these words, just like a St. Augustine who knew Scripture. And he heard those words, tole lege, tole lege, take and read. He took the Scriptures, he opened it up, and he saw it in different light. Now, because this man approached it with such honesty, and conviction. He wanted to preach the gospel efficiently. He didn't want to just pass over certain verses that we Protestants normally just ignore. He wanted to delve into it. He wanted to delve into the proper interpretation of Scripture. In doing that, as he said many times, he himself was quite disturbed he found the church that Christ was talking about could only be the Catholic Church. The unity that the church boasts of in the Bible is only found in the Catholic Church. The authority that Christ spoke with and that He gave to His apostles and that He speaks of the nature of His church was only found in the Catholic Church. He said, basically, he misunderstood Catholicism and how we revere the Bible. Why, why not? The Bible is a catalog of Christian belief. The Word of God. It would be insane to throw that aside. We don't have to obsess in remembering chapter and verse to honor the Bible. Notice, what did our Lord say? Not all those who say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father. You can read the Bible all day long, but if you do not ad adhere to to what the Bible is trying to tell you. Not trying to live up to the ideal that is contained in sacred scripture. Then what was the point of reading it? What's the point in listening, reading or listening, watching nowadays, an instructional, go to watching and listening, an instructional video on how to build a deck then after watching it, you just throw your hands up in the air and do your own thing. By the way, you don't know how to build a deck. Or you just pick and choose the parts that you thought would work. 
you get a mess. You get an unstable deck. And you'll probably get a broken neck later on. Now think of that spiritually. Spiritually, your foundation is weak. You open yourself up to falling into sin because you only knew the words. You only gave lip service. Not taking the words of the gospel, the words of the Psalms, the book of wisdom, and so many others, and try to learn from them. Try to know God in a deeper way. Probably of all the verses in Scripture that I think is the most telling, at least that can inspire us, St. Paul, on the road to Damascus, Lord, what would you have me do? I read this. I know it. You can apply this to our catechism and other points of our faith. But now, what would you have me do? And it is answered in the gospel. Learn of me. Learn of me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Going back to St. Louis, he learned of Christ. He was meek. He was humble. And yet he was firm. He was strong. He was an example to his children, to his nation. He is such an example. Not only is he a tertiary in the Franciscan Third Order, he is also the patron for Third Order members. So, especially to you who are in the Third Order, think about your vocation as a member of that order. It is a religious vocation. You are required to give yourself to God each and every day according to the ideals of our Holy Father, St. Francis. And here you have one who had everything any person could want as far as wealth and prestige, and yet he preferred to follow the holy man of Assisi. Because he saw in Francis the mirror of Christ. And we see... Christ reflected in St. Francis. So, if you go back to the gospel, sake of scripture, what was it that St. Francis heard being read? If thou wilt be perfect, go sell what thou hast and give to the poor and come follow me. Thou wilt be perfect. We must strive to that perfection. We must look to the examples of the saints, and especially today, the example of St. Louis, who showed us that strength, that courage, and shows us where we find this virtue, all virtue. We find it in Christ, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Benedictio Dei, mi potenti, spatri, servidi, spiritus santi, scienda super vostra, di sempre. Amen.